Hi, my name is Mary Spender and welcome to Series 2, Episode 9 of Choosed It Talks. This series will consist of 10 interviews in total with some of my favourite musicians. You can watch the interview in full here on YouTube, but if you prefer just to listen, then you can also download the podcast, which is available everywhere now. This week I chat to Norwegian singer-songwriter and guitarist Tora, whose videos you might have seen on Instagram where she has a huge following. But really for her it's all about the music as she is about to release her third album, so check out her Spotify page too. This was the first time we ever got to chat and I'm so glad to have her as part of this series, which of course is brought to you by DistroKid, my favourite music distribution service, which gets your music into online stores and streaming platforms and there is a link in the description for you to get 7% off your first year. I would love you to comment below and share your favourite moments of this conversation, maybe leaving a timestamp or quote, but first let's get into the show. Tuesday, 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 Tuesday talks. To be, to be honest, I mean, we can start there because I, I find that the most impressive thing, um, your songwriting, you're, you're singing in English and it's it's not your native language. And yet your lyrics are great and and your songs are great. So tell me about your process for that. And like, I guess um, I guess you've studied English from an early age and. I mean, English was, you know, everywhere, you know, the internet. When when YouTube came along, I think maybe I was like 12, 13, 14 years old. And like, like everything I watched was in English. And that kind of, you know, you hear it so much that eventually you, it's just a part of you, I think. Yeah, I think I definitely lack, I'm trying to learn Spanish at the moment. And yeah, I mean, I've literally just started. It's kind of like a quarantine ha hobby um, and just trying to do a little bit each day. But yeah, just trying to, yeah, trying to like consume content in a different language is obviously the best way. Um, did you, was there like a specific thing that helped you learn English the most? Like, was it a TV series or like a YouTube channel or something? You know, to be honest, I have to say, Maybe it had to be video games. Video games? Are you a gamer? <laughs> well, you know, I was. I was growing up. And like, not like a gamer. I didn't play World of Warcraft or anything. Um, but I was more into uh, Grand Theft Auto. Is that what you call it? Yeah, Grand Theft Auto, yeah. And uh, Red Dead Redemption and FIFA. And I could like, and Sims. Yeah, The Sims. Like for hours. Yeah. yeah Sims is awesome. And... Um, yeah, so I just spent too much time playing video games that were in English and, you know, their conversations were in English. And for me to get into the story of the game, I had to understand. And I started out at a very young age. So I think that helped me the most. That's embarrassing to say, but yep. I I always feel like now with the internet and how much... Um how much distraction there is for teenagers who could be learning guitar but they're gaming I actually always think about back to being a teenager myself and I'm like I wasted hours on the sims and I wasted hours playing like Crash Bandicoot did you ever play that um definitely like hijacking my my brother's playstation when it came to like uh, Grand Theft Auto that I was definitely like too young to be playing um so I kind of when people are like, oh, you know, kids nowadays just aren't going to have the time to practice. I'm like, we all had distractions. Like every era has had something else to keep them occupied other than actually sitting down and doing some practice. But what what age did you pick up the guitar? Maybe 15, 16 years old, I think. I watched the Andertons video um, interview and you said that you came from a really musical family. So can you tell me a bit more about your your musical family? Uh, yeah, well... Um... My sister is a singer, uh, and she was like, Norway is a small country, so she was kind of like a rock star, but she she didn't do rock music. She's like a jazz soul singer. So, uh, and she's 15 years older than me. So when I was growing up, we were like traveling around in Norway, going to see her do shows. And that was kind of like my childhood uh, and being backstage and also meeting these celebrities. You know, it was like, 
it was crazy. And uh, my father is also a music teacher. He plays like every instrument and blah, blah, blah. And my brother is a guitar player and a producer. And uh, like, I think I, I started out acting at the age of, of eight. I had like my first main main role uh, at the age of eight. So I grew up on stage and I grew up backstage as well with my family. So, and there was always music in the house, like super intense, but it was. So, um, yeah. Well, when it comes to having a musical family, so I had the complete opposite. Um, my, my parents appreciate music, but they weren't musical. And so when I started showing interest in it, they had to sort of navigate how to keep me occupied <laughs> when it came to music and like where I needed to go to school and who needed to teach me and, um, you know, were they the right teachers? Was I learning the right instruments? Because I, I also didn't pick up guitar till till early teens like 12 13 um but I think I was always jealous of people who had musical families and who understood so uh did it did it affect your love of music at all did you sometimes get tired of like maybe you know having a, a sibling that's so much you know 15 years is a huge amount of time of musical knowledge did it sometimes feel a bit intimidating no, because I didn't want to do music because everybody around me was doing music. So I'm stubborn. So I was like, well, I'm not going to do that because that's lame. Because you don't want to do what your parents are doing and what your siblings are doing. So I was like, nope, <laughs> that's not happening. So yeah, so I was I played soccer and I was actually very good at playing soccer for that was my thing. Um, that was all I did. And I was going to do that, you know for a living if that's possible but uh, I was going to try but then I just oh I love music and I just have to it feels like you have something inside of you that you're not getting out you know the musicality and, and, and everything you want to create I just had so much at the age of 15 and I picked up the guitar and it made sense to me like like that I fell in love with it like right away and that was a great feeling it it just doesn't it doesn't feel like work at that point, does it? And I I bet doing what you do now and you know touring and um, making music it, it just it's not always easy, but it doesn't feel it doesn't feel um, impossible to do. And it's it's just a it's a nice creative outlet. Um, in terms of uh, your band, obviously being your your first name but then it being a band, can you sort of talk more about like the songwriting process between you and the other musicians and like who you've had on board in terms of all your albums? Yeah, well, that's actually, it's, it's, I write all the music and uh, I make all my demos at home in Logic, like super, super easy, but you know, so it sounds okay. And my brother, who is also my producer and my uh, extra guitar player in the band, he is also a great songwriter. So I sent him all of my demos. And then I travel to where he lives, which is in Trondheim, and I live in Oslo. Uh, so I travel to him in his studio, and then we just work out the ideas together. And it's like super intense, you know, when you're in this bubble of, you're just working, you lost track, you lost track. And, and we love it, and we, I love him, and sometimes I hate him, obviously, because he's my brother, but, uh, He's like, to me, he's he's a genius to me. And I don't say that about a lot of people, and not because he's my brother. I would, but he, he is so, I, I have no words for him. His guitar playing and his songwriting is, is mind blowing. And together we make this music called, I don't know, blues, pop, rock, soul. I don't even know what it is anymore. But uh, yeah, it's, it's the two of us, it's the two of us. I imagine like calling your brother a genius because I've got an older brother. Uh, calling him a genius is like the most complimentary thing because like the last thing you want to do is call your bro your own brother a genius <laughs> when you're impressed by them. Especially are you I know. are you the younger are you younger than him? Yeah, seven years. Seven years, right? Um, in terms of him playing guitar, I mean, this might sound stupid, but like, did he? help 
guide you when it came to the guitar? Did he teach you stuff or did you just try and do it independently? Yeah, uh, well, he wanted to teach me. Um, uh, but I was like, you no, know, learning from your siblings, that's difficult, right? Especially when I was like 15 years old, you don't want to hang out with your brother that much. And especially not him telling you what to do and how to do it. That's like the worst thing ever. <laughs> so I asked him, I remember one time asking him, how do you, how do you do like an E chord on the guitar? Can you show me that? E and A. So I can do play the blues. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, that's how you do it. And I was like, thank you and goodbye. That, and that's it. I bet he learns stuff from you now though. <laughs> Yeah, he, he, yeah, ah, he's, he's so much better than me. Like he's, he's so much better than me. So it's like, um, I learned from him, but I would never tell right. him that. Okay. We'll keep it secret by putting it on YouTube. <laughs> 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 so when it comes to writing lyrics, do you write lyrics together? Or I know you said you write the songs, but does he, does he contribute in that element or just sort of music side and production side? Right. Uh, I write uh, all of my lyrics, um, he contributes when it comes to like the arrangement, um, the instruments and um, um, yeah, but I write the lyrics and all the melodies. And when you take an idea to him, do you have like, I, I enjoy writing a song from start to finish and then, you know, making amendments to the arrangement later, um, taking on, you know, like I don't really do that many co-writes, but if I'm working with a producer or something, I might make changes then. Do you feel like you could perform the song before you take it to him or is it more sort of like an outline of where you want it to go and then he finishes it off yeah that's a good question um i when it comes to like the slow song kind of like the ballads then i can do them when i do gigs on my own before i have shown them to him before we are working them together but i know just me sitting alone with a guitar writing a song i know if it's going to be like this big kind of pop song or if it's going to be like down. So I know like right away what type of song this is and if I should play it on my own or not. Um, so it depends on the song really, but so yes and no, yes and no. Yeah, so it sort of, it can change. Um, do you write mainly on electric guitar or acoustic? Electric. You're a phenomenal electric player. Like you're exactly the guitarist I want to listen to because you're very tasteful. And, um, the, you know, it's, it's just the, it's the guitar playing I dig, but I have seen that you don't really have guitar heroes. You, you're much more inspired by like performers like Beyonce and stuff. Can you speak a bit more on that? Because your performing style again is just, it's just all different. Like, that's why I like you. It's just, it's just not what we've seen before. And, um, it's kind of like a, it's a nice approach knowing that you're inspired by, by performers, not just other guitarists. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. Um, well, I think, you know, uh, a, a lot of people, because I have followers on Instagram and uh, on Instagram, there's only like guitar videos of me, like one minute guitar videos and that's it. So I think a lot of people around the world thinks that that's what I do. <laughs> like every minute of every day. Uh, but I have never been like this guitar girl. I have never cared that much about guitar or gear or whatever. I'm, I love to be on stage. I love to perform. Uh, I love to be in front of the audience and feel the energy. That's what I love to do. Uh, and the guitar is like my extra kind of best friend, uh, that I can, you know, have, I can speak with it. It's like, it's what a, an extension of my voice. Is that something I can say? Yeah. So if I don't have, if I don't feel like I can sing it, I will play it. So, um, so I love listening to great singers. I love watching great performers. Like I'm the biggest Michael Jackson fan in the whole world. Everything he, he did is like, uh, he's my number one. Bruno Mars is great. Anderson Pack is great. Like, people with energy and you just you just feel how much they love to do what they do so that's why i have ah uh, someone's going to hate me now but guitar players who like are guitar players you know what i'm saying they just look down on the guitar and they play whatever I, that's not um interesting to me no me neither 
<laughs> no, no, honestly, it, it's the funniest thing about having like, obviously I talk about gear on my channel and I'm, you know, I, I love playing um, both acoustic and electric guitar, but I'm definitely not, you know, I'm definitely not a virtuosic guitarist that I'm not shredding. I, I can't, firstly, I just, I don't have the drive to learn how to do it. And also it's just not necessary. It doesn't serve the song for me. Like if I'm sat at home writing a song and then performing it, 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 I, shredding and then singing on top of that, it just, it wouldn't really make much sense. So there's no point, there's no point me actually learning that when, you know, we have to, we have to find time to write songs, uh, get them actually laid down and demoed and then record and then, you know, try and, try and perform them as, as much as you can. Um, in terms of tips you might have for people who are, because if you've grown up on stage and backstage, um, you've lived a very different life to quite a lot of other people who who haven't gotten to experience that. Um, do you have any tips to be comfortable and like find yourself on stage and like not have those janky nerves that make you um ruin your performance but actually enhance your performance and like connect with the audience way more by being like i see you i'm playing to you i want to communicate something to you did you have you learned anything along the way that helps you do that i think it's about really not like don't don't care about what other people think like that's like my um N number one rule in life and also on stage like I, I i know a lot of people can be like affected if someone is looking on their phone while you're on stage like then your job as an artist on stage is to make them put their phone away if they are on their phone you are not doing your job good enough that's my mindset then i need to go back home and figure out what did i do and just like get to a point where you're like doing this constantly you know i'm sorry but basically like I'm, I'm going to be so great that you just you're going to look what just happened watching this show with this woman what is this like even though if it's not that great in my mind i'm going like yep yep this is cool this is cool because if i if i think that the audience will feel that they will feel my if i'm insecure or not they 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 are not stupid. They notice. They feel it. So they can be like, oh, or they can be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so true. And it's, you do have to, when you get up on stage, it's so vulnerable that actually you, you do just have to bear your soul and you do just have to own exactly the level you're at, you know, however many people are in the audience, if there are three people, sometimes that's way more difficult than if there are 300 uh, or 3000. So like, if you can try and like, just own what you've got, there's nothing else you can do in that state. Like you can only deliver what you have. Um, and yeah, people feel it. And I, I hate that whole thing when people apologize, um, they like apologize for themselves. You're like, just let me enjoy it. Like maybe I actually don't have any preconceptions about you. And I, I don't judge you because you're doing something incredible by stepping up on stage. So give me something, give me something here to connect to. Um, and it's, it's why I really encourage people to do open mics because I think they're the hardest thing you can ever do because that audience isn't there to see you. As soon as you have people, yeah, as soon as they buy tickets, that's the easiest bit. Like that job is already done. They just want to see you do your thing. And, and you've already like got to that level that, you know, you probably have a bit of confidence around performing because you've done it before, or, you know, you've drawn that audience in somehow. But I always used to love open mics because I definitely, I definitely ruined a few performances by being too nervous and, and being insecure and then just rushing through. And then it got to a point where it was like, oh, I'm so done with being nervous anymore. What if I just actually enjoy myself? <laughs> yeah. Um, what are you thinking about when you are on stage? Are you just in flow? I feel kind of like my personality changes, uh, especially when I'm with my band. 
then I'm in the zone. Then it's, it's super weird. But um, what I'm thinking about, wow. Um, I, I, I just love it so much that I want to enjoy every minute of it. Not overthink it, just, but at the same time, I am so exhausted after a gig with, with my band because I'm using my, my whole body. I'm using, I'm singing, I'm telling a story, I'm playing guitar, I'm fixing the pedals, I'm running around stage diving. I'm like, I'm doing the Michael Jackson dance. I'm, it's like, and I don't work out. So after a show, I'm like, ah, oh. like everything hurts. And that's, that's the right feeling for me. If my body is like broken and everything hurts, then I did, then I, then I feel great. So I think I'm just, I just feel like I'm in heaven when I'm, when I'm on stage. I, I, I love it so much. Now I'm smiling as well because I miss it so much. <laughs> I know, I know. It's it's gonna it's gonna be a rough few months um, without live music to watch or you know deliver. Um, when you're, how do I put this? When you're on tour and you are giving it your all for that hour, however many hours you get to play a night, how do you make sure that you can keep on delivering like if if you say you don't work out surely your soccer training helped um helped your general fitness levels by being younger do you have any tips to really like survive touring because it's it's grueling i had a really grueling experience in november um so uh any tips for that well i think working out it doesn't hurt and (laughs) uh, i mean before uh our tour that was in our, uh, we did a tour in February, I think. The first tour with the first album. And I worked out before that one. I, I started running and I was like, oh, this is going to be the best tour of my life. And I did that for like a week. And then I started eating burgers again and drinking beer. So I tried. I really, really tried. Uh, but yeah, working out is definitely smart. Don't drink too much alcohol. Try to eat, I don't know, salad or something. I'm saying things that I don't do, but I think that people should be doing, you know? <laughs> So I was I was going to say some healthy food. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm the worst. <laughs> At least you're honest about it. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm really just asking because like I felt terrible. I only did like a a seven date tour as a support act for the Brothers Landreth in November, and it was it was it had been a while since I'd been on the road, and it was like the most grueling amount of like driving. We were just doing endless miles in the car like eight hours driving every day in the van and um the the idea of like starting off I managed to go to the gym on the first day in the hotel that we had and then because I'd booked it all so last minute the the hotel level just like the quality declined so there weren't any gyms anymore and also the time like the time that we had uh the time we had free just became sleeping time because we were just knackered um and afterwards after we came back like I sort of like powered on through and then I was ill for a solid week um and had to recover again for another London show but I don't know how people do it um uh, until you have like a real sophisticated team it just seems it seems really really hard um but then you know the beer and the burgers are also really fun too so like (laughs) it's yeah that's so true. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm just thinking that, you know, Keith Richards did it. But then again, you know, he had, they had, Rolling Stones had like a team, you know, of God knows how many people and they could just show up, put on their guitar and blow up, whatever. And everybody loved them either way. So that's different. But he, he survived. I'm, I mean, it's, it's hard to, bring up the rolling stones when when you understand like the level of drugs that they did (laughs) and but but i know that they're the 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 way they managed to get through that and you know still be performing today is because they had the best quality drugs (laughs) that money could buy (laughs) and it's like yeah there's there's no point me even trying because like there's there's no way i can afford it um uh, and obviously drugs are bad obviously that's that's given drugs are bad drugs are bad don't do drugs um just i mean beer is enough for me too um so if music is your career now and it's also like your great love do you have any other hobbies ah uh, no uh because i don't really have the time anymore 
uh, it, it came to a point where I was like, if I'm not traveling and playing or practicing, uh, I am, you know, working on my Instagram, which is, it takes a lot of time, you know, uh, a lot of messages, it's so much work, <laughs> like, it still blows my mind, um, you, you know all of this, like, the content and just trying to, to make it look good, and, um, but, no, I really don't have any hobbies other than trying to meet my friends as often as I can, uh, trying to take care of myself, to actually sleep, uh, and, and eat, uh, yeah, we just, it's just, right now that's that's the case but i think it will change that I, maybe i will start playing playstation again i was thinking about starting to game and then i i also had to have the conversation with myself being like i don't have time for that <laughs> I, d- I really should be making more more videos um yeah it's it's it is strange though and i you know i i wasn't into exercise as a kid and i I had to force myself to get into exercise, uh, you know, a few years ago. And, and really that's my like escapism now, because it's the only time when my head isn't like super busy with ideas or, you know, feeling guilty about all the things that I'm not doing enough of when it comes to guitar, when it comes to songwriting, when it comes to making YouTube videos. Um, so for me, I do like, I do cycling and, and I try and run. I'm a terrible runner. That's that's so cool. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> you look great. Yeah. Why thank you. Why thank you. Well, I'm not I'm not on tour all the time. Whereas, you know, it would fall apart massively if I was on the road. Um so yeah, it's it's the way for me to stay sane. And, you know, right now, I guess it's like a way of keeping healthy. I don't know what the situation's like for you. Um are you allowed to travel around and you're doing these live streams. Yeah, well, um, not really. Um, like, I can't... Uh... Shall I edit this bit out? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, because I'm... Uh, like, I travel, but then I drive alone in a car. Uh, and I get to the venue, and we just keep a distance, like, super distance. And I'm all alone uh, on the stage, and there's... You, you just feel like you were there all alone, even though there were like six camera people and sound guys and everything. You just you never said hi. It was like, hi. and you do your thing and you have to get out of there because I'm supposed to be in Oslo. So I just have to get back as soon as possible. So super strange. Yeah, it's it's so strange. Um, but, you know, we just have to all team up by like, yeah, staying safe and just making sure you know, we try and keep as many people healthy as possible. Um, with, uh, let's get back onto music because that's the most interesting thing. With, um, now you've made, it's three albums in total, right? Yeah, well, the last one hasn't, isn't out yet, but it's, it's finished. Oh, cool. Okay, when's that coming out? Well, it was supposed to come out at the end of March, but we postponed it because of the virus. Mm-hmm. Are you... Are you trying to um, revolve the release around a, a touring schedule, or are you just when are you delaying it till? Yeah, you know we were we were do, supposed to do a UK tour, like in a, April twentieth or something, so in three days. But that was also postponed, and the album was supposed to come out because we were doing the UK tour. Uh, but now everything is kind of like moved, um, so I'm I'm just holding on to my album right now because. If I release that, I won't have anything to to put out or to to show off when everything is back to normal. So I'm kind of holding on to it and waiting for the exact right time. Well, I, I bet you're creating a bit of a buzz around it. Like I saw that you got Aaron Sterling to play drums on a, on a few tracks, right? One track. That's awesome. How did you meet him? Oh, wow. Um... Well, uh, I, I study music in Oslo, uh, so I, I'm on my last year. I will be done in June. And in the fall of 2019, John Mayer was, was touring, and John Mayer was doing a show in Oslo. So my school was able to book Aaron Sterling to do a master class at my school. Uh, and I was like, Aaron Sterling, I, I can't, I, I, I didn't even know. So what happened is that the teachers at my school were like, well, Aaron Sterling, he doesn't really have any, like, 
wishes for how he wants this to this masterclass to go. So we thought maybe we get some students to play with him. And they gave me the responsibility to put together a band uh, and to pick some songs uh, to play with Aaron. And I knew that many weeks before he came. So I was, uh, and I couldn't tell anyone. And he was like, I was so excited. And then he came, I almost cried, but I managed to stay cool. Uh, <laughs> and then we played three, four songs with Aaron. And I was like, and I experienced a lot of cool things in 2019. Like I played the Royal Albert Hall at all things in the world, but still playing with Aaron Sterling is the, like musically, the coolest thing I have ever done. I can't really explain it because his energy is, I have no words for that guy. And so after we played together, he was like, do you have Instagram? <laughs> yeah, I have Instagram. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't, I don't know. Uh, so we, we talked a little bit and then he gave me some VIP passes to John's show. I didn't get to meet John. No, no. But my family was able to go backstage and take pictures with Aaron. It was like this whole oh, crazy thing. We had some coffee and then we have just kept in touch after that. And I put some, played some guitar on one of his songs. He hasn't released that yet. And he did play some drums on my song. So. He's a friend now, I guess. <laughs> That's amazing and and so well deserved. Like I mean, ultimately he's he's a he's a musician's musician, you know, like he can see who you are, what you do. And there's there's no reason why he wouldn't want to have a part of that, you know, be part of that. So um it's it's pretty cool that, you know, you firstly got that opportunity, but then of course he's going to love what you do especially you know especially the 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 style of music you're making and also it being um it it being something different it's just it's just you're right when it's hard to define it it's not blues it's not just pop it's not just soul it's like this mix up of it but it's ultimately just you so when you were when you were crafting your sort of persona to become an artist like when did you actually release your first album? And um, was that your first release or did you drop some singles before that? Or like, what was that process like of actually becoming, you know, you? Yeah, uh, well, you know, we released some, like an EP um, in um, when I was like, I don't know, 18 years old or something with a few songs. And uh, we released another one a few years later. That was supposed to be like the last thing we released before we ended the band because everybody was moving and and uh, they were kind of leaving me. And I was like, well, well. Uh, so we recorded <laughs> a few songs. We released them. And that they, those ended up being kind of popular on the radio in Norway. And all of a sudden we were getting gigs. And I was like, well, I've been trying to get this to work for many years. Why does it have to work now when everybody's leaving you know uh so we couldn't quit we couldn't stop uh thank god and then um uh, yeah in january 2019 february or something 2019 we released our first full album and after that it just kind of yeah finally after 10 years finally something started to happen and yeah basically i mean that's always the way right like um you don't you don't really want quick success because like imagine if you'd gotten famous at 18 like where you are now how how old are you now 26 so still super young and just but just I feel like eight years is is a mammoth amount of time to really figure yourself out and I'm 29 and I only really started like YouTube at in 2016 and then from that have I been able to like move more into being comfortable within myself and like understanding that I can be in control of my sound and and um it, it's just strange to me now thinking like how driven I was to be a success at such a young age when it's like oh you just don't know you don't know anything at that age like you see you see pop stars being really young like Shawn Mendes who's like a great guitarist great songwriter great performer actually and you're like he's only like 19 20 like where's he going to be when he's 28 like it's 
it's either going to be, a, you know, a difficult road for him managing that fame or he's going to be, you know, a really seriously well groomed artist by that point. Um, but yeah, it's a lot to navigate. Like, so I'm, I'm, are you more sort of comfortable now with like having a bit of success, especially in Norway and then especially on Instagram? Yeah, because as you say, you know, it's, it's the, you know, you work so hard for so many years and it happens like gradually. So it, it, it's never a shock. You feel in some way that, okay, well, I deserve this one. Okay. I deserve that one. Okay. This makes sense because I did that. And I, it's not like I'm, ooh, ooh, I'm never because my, my goals and my, like are up here, my dreams are so big that I will never reach them, you know, <laughs> ever. So I will never, I will never be like arrogant or because I never feel like I'm there ever. I'm just, I just want to work harder and to, uh, yeah. But what I realized at, at a certain point was, you know, you always try to be your heroes. Um, you want to sound like your heroes, of course, in the beginning, but got to a point where I was like, well, maybe I'm cool. What, what if I am cool? Is that, is that a possibility? And maybe I can, I can be like the way I sound. Maybe you want to sound like me one day. What if I try that approach to it? And what, what if that works? You know, so I'm, that's where I'm at right now. Just trying to be me, how I dress, how I talk, my sense of humor, my energy, like 24 seven and not trying to, you know, adapt to anything because that's so easy to do right now. Yeah, it's it is easier to do, but it's so much harder to maintain. And by you making that decision, it's just it's just the way that you'll have a, a long career, like you'll have longevity because you're not trying to be someone else. Um, what's that famous quote where it's like, be yourself because everyone else is taken? It's it's so right, right? Like you have to. And also, you know, it's good to be unapologetic I feel like quite a lot of musicians are sort of like apologetic about what they're doing. And like they have to you have to kind of put yourself in a box. You have to be like, oh, I sound like this person and this person and this person. But combined, is that OK? And you're like you sort of like give it to people and they're like, yeah, no, I like that bit. I don't like that bit. Um, you should sound more like this. And you have to get to a point where you're like that sounding like that person is not going to make me happy. So what if I just say, I don't need you as a fan. I actually, I don't need you to like my music. I don't need you as my audience. I know that if I stay in my, my own lane rather than the lane that everyone tells me to be in, that's where I'm going to feel most comfortable um, and be able to continue this for the next 40 years, which is like, it's all a musician wants is like a long career, right? We don't want this to be over. We can't fathom it ever stopping and no, never. That's, yeah, I agree. Good. <laughs> um, uh, what is, uh, tell me about your goals that you think you'll never achieve, but it, like, it doesn't really matter because you're enjoying the journey. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, I think I have always pictured myself because I'm stupid and, uh, but like playing these big arenas, you know, uh, with my own songs and because that is my goal like playing at Wembley let's say that's my goal you know that will probably never happen and I know that I know that but that's my goal which means that I will work so hard that I will get like the small things on the way you know I will experience so much cool stuff even though it won't be Wembley necessarily but it will be other things like Playing a sold out show for 500 people for me is like, what? Who are you guys? Like, what? where did you come from? And why do you know my songs? Like, that is still mind blowing. So, yeah, as you said, I'm just enjoying the journey. That's the coolest thing. Yeah. Well, when you think about it, though, like if you flew every single one of your Instagram followers to London, you'd definitely you'd oversell Wembley Stadium. Um, but for me, yeah, it's like. Wembley Stadium is so iconic, um, obviously around the world, but particularly in Europe. And it's just one of those things where it's it is exciting to dream because it it does happen for some people. Like it it is it is 
it isn't impossible if people have done it then you know why not why not dream that big and it, it was there a, a thought process behind dreaming up something like that but then also like overcoming that it it might never happen but you might as well enjoy the journey did you learn that from anyone in particular or did you figure that out by yourself I think growing up in a family where um not just music but also the the industry uh and how it works was like like an everyday thing at our house so so I learned so much about that and I learned being realistic you know and I also learned that being a musician means that you will be broke for the first 10 years I need, like I knew that before even thinking about starting so knowing that I think I I went into the whole thing with a different mindset it, it, it was work for me it was, it was a job from day one like I will I will not play for free like that's what that and it's you like you're 16 years old you've been playing guitar for like six months and like I will not play for free like who says that but it worked. Like it worked because I, in my mind, I was like, nope, nope. <laughs> and people were like, okay. So, so yeah. That's, that's very impressive because I played a lot for free. Um, and, you know, in one way it was like, otherwise I wasn't going to get the opportunity, like, especially where I grew up. Like it was all about just like gigging at the local pub and, you know, I, when I was underage and stuff, they were, the fact that they were just letting me in and allowing me to play the music I wanted to play. I, di I didn't really care, but but it does get to a point, obviously, where you're like, okay, I do, I, I have to pay rent still. Um, and a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of studying, a lot of money uh, for gear, especially, you know, doing pub gigs like I used to, like having the PA system, um, having the, the crappy car to flog around that PA system to then be able to play um changing strings like little things that just amount like you have to end up making money from it but it is tough and it's obviously it's only going to get tougher in terms of the way you know it is right now but um when thinking of yourself as a business did you and and starting instagram like tell me about your journey of of growing that social media channel because it's it's obviously you know you've got a lot of fans now and it is it is part of your work and part of your you know your name yeah yeah oh well um uh, I Instagram was just you know I didn't have any gigs for a few years there because um as I said my band was was moving and stuff so I didn't have anything to do so uh I started really practicing guitar and uh, I always like to film my performances and then I because I learned so much from watching myself uh, perform so I thought well why not film myself when I'm practicing so I can hear and then learn from what I think was bad or what was good and uh, I started noticing well on Instagram people are posting like guitar videos that's cool that's super cool so I just posted I didn't think that much about it it was like well put it out there I you, it maybe like the likes were kind of like an applause to me like because I wasn't playing shows, so I needed that response. Because that's kind of addictive, you know. You you feed on that as an artist. You you know that. So yeah, <laughs> you have to have that because. Uh, so that was Instagram was that for me. And I woke up one day and someone ha has shared my video, and I was like, "What does this mean? Why? What do I do now?" I was not expecting this, and from that day, it just had increased and increased. And I people was telling me. You need to, um, if you get to like 100,000 followers, you have to start thinking about um, you as a brand and not just give away things for free all the time and not be be stupid. Like, this is, this is work now. That was super strange because I've never worked towards like a certain amount of followers. That has never been a goal in any way. So it, it still is like, I, I I just I don't get it really. Have you thought about um, you know sort of switching Instagram 
over to YouTube as well, or like having a YouTube channel as well. I saw I saw you had a YouTube channel, and obviously I'll link it below as well um, in the description of this video. But for me, I would say in terms of finding an audience and you know growing your whole brand, um, putting out free content is the best way, and it's it's obviously the most accessible. Obviously, you then want like a um, is it the pillar effect? What's it? A uh, funnel effect where it's like, okay, you have all these people up here who have it for free. And then some of them will love it so much that they'll support you, whether it's on Patreon or by watching your YouTube videos, which are monetized. Um, and the way you play guitar, like I know that I'm basically selfishly trying to encourage you to do maybe more longer form <laughs> tutorials of like how to play like you play, especially while you're studying, right? So like you're picking up things and you're learning things that other people would just love to, you know, consume. Um, but one of the interesting things about YouTube that a friend said to me recently, is like YouTube actually goes out and finds you, your audience for you and, and, and pulls an audience in and it recommends your videos to other people. Whereas like, it's a little bit harder to build that on Instagram, which makes your Instagram page even more impressive that you've, you've got over a hundred thousand because if you translate that to YouTube um, and, and, you know, you just start putting up guitar stuff that's like it's easy to follow and playable and, and you're so easy to watch. Um, I think you do really, really well. And it would just be another source of income to support yourself making records and and grow that fan base. So that's that's me we, selfishly we need to have a chat <laughs> we need to have a chat about that yeah we can do that so you can teach me you, you need to teach me that because i'm i'm uh well you know so yes if you can help me i'm in i'm in <laughs> yeah <laughs> of course of course i mean that's you know that's why i wanted to have um this conversation because like it's just exciting to see and you know you are very well versed in guitar and i just think that should be shared and all that hard work needs to be recognized even more. So, um, yeah, of course we, we can talk about that. And especially if you are thinking for the business side, which so many musicians do not understand and they don't understand that they're going to be broke for the first 10 years. They kind of like assume that they're going to make their millions. And so they quit a bit too early when it's like, oh, you could have just been on the verge of not making a million, but like making a few hundred here and being able to reinvest that back into yourself, whether that's gear, whether that's going into the studio, all that sort of stuff. But um, when it comes to balancing everything and then you you studying right now, tell me more about you studying. What, what are you at a conservatoire? Well, oh, now now I will lack the words in English. Uh, so I, I, I don't, I, I, yeah. It's it's a school where we study um, music, like um, popular music, uh, for three years, uh, and we learn uh, music theory, but, but but mainly playing live and playing your instrument. That's the, like the yeah. Me and my words are great. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's it's um, because I moved to Oslo. Um, like three years ago, and I needed something to do. I needed to um, connect with people uh, in the music industry. I needed to make friends and have something to do. Uh, and I was, I was, I was kind of the person who said, like, I will never study music. I don't understand it. <laughs> no. uh, but uh, I, I started studying in 2017, and I don't regret it at all because um, just meet the people you meet, the friends you make. That's like. That's life, you know, that's, that's what makes me smile every day, going to that school and meeting my friends. And we talk about guitars, we talk about music, you know, it's, it's the environment, you know, it's, it's given me so much joy. And that's why I will probably live in Oslo for the rest of my life, because they have made me love this city so much. So, yeah, it's been very cool. That's great. I mean, when it comes to education, I don't think anyone ever regrets it. because. You know, for me, I, I studied classical music at school and um, I don't regret it at all because like the people I met are, you know, now some of my best friends and and I'm glad I did it. It was it was probably 
more effort than it needed to be like if I'd studied guitar or you know moved into the more popular music sector it would have been more enjoyable um but I still don't regret it it's just like now I've I've kind of been thinking about it and you're kind of inspiring me but I've 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 been thinking about music school again I don't know if I I don't know if I have um I don't know if I really have the resilience to like (laughs) go through it all again (laughs) <laughs> which because it's brutal like it's 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 so much um uh it's really really hard it's 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 it is taxing and um you know I've been out of education for a, a nice long time now that I'm like I'm glad I don't have deadlines and and stuff like that however I've managed to make a career out of deadlines by like uploading week weekly YouTube videos I was going to say that you have more <laughs> deadlines than a lot of people I know so <laughs> Well, for for me, it's like the only way I can be creative. I have to have a limit. Um, I, I'm always envious of people who are just like, who just work at something every day and they can sort of manage big projects and just sort of chip away at it and not really need like a final date. But for me, like if you want anything done from me, give me a deadline and I, I'll meet it. Um, but yeah, otherwise, otherwise I just don't work that well. And I guess that is the hardest thing about YouTube in general is like staying consistent. But for musicians who've had to stay consistent at something like guitar for their whole lives to be able to progress, um, it's, it's not that hard. It's not that hard. If I can do it, then you definitely can. Um, but so tell me about your, your, if you're not really like a super gearhead, um, what do you love playing? Like I've seen your Strat, which looks stunning. Um, Can you tell me more about the instruments you actually are drawn to, to play? You know, I have tried a lot of guitars and I I have tried more guitars that I didn't like than guitars that I've actually liked because we are, you know, you get kind of picky at some point. It's like, nah, there's something wrong about like the small things. Like, no, (laughs) it can be a great guitar, but as, I think every guitar player says it's all about, does it feel right? Does it feel right? And does it sound good on your gear? Like with your amp and your pedals, does it give you the oof that that you're looking for? Yes or no? That's it, basically. But yeah, I'm I'm a Strat person, 100%. I'm a Strat person. And I have this vintage uh, Strat that I've had for many years that's beautiful, so beautiful. Uh, and I now have a vintage Telecaster that is even, that's one of the best guitars I've tried. It's so good. I love that one. And the blue strap, it, it's actually not mine. The Fender strap, it's not mine. I'm borrowing it from a friend. Uh, and I have no plans of giving it back. <laughs> but good answer. Still, good answer. <laughs> thank you. But that's, yeah, a, a Fender strap, like, it's, come on the most beautiful thing in the world. It really is. And I I think I I sometimes wonder whether I've, um, well, firstly, when it comes to gear, there's only so much time in your day to like, and and there's only so much you need, especially to to progress at guitar. Like, you know, I always say like an affordable guitar that you love the look of with a good setup is way better than an extremely expensive guitar that just isn't quite right and like, whether it's the the neck is too big or just you just don't like the sound of it, even if it looks pretty and looks expensive. It's just like if you're drawn to the other instrument, then you just have to stick at that. Um, and it will be hard to replicate, especially like the first thing that you really solidly fall in love with. So, yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a con- time consuming hobby um, that some people absolutely adore. And I'm obviously a hypocrite when it comes to like having gear because I have a studio full of full of guitars but um, so I know I'm an absolute hypocrite but there are I I mean people will be aware of like the instrument that I'm most drawn to is definitely my GV rock that's it's I don't know it just it spoke to me in a certain way that people have found you know if if your strat has spoken to you or the the telly is now speaking to you it's just like whatever you're drawn to most it's it's always going to be it's like the first child, isn't it? Not that I know what that's like because yeah. I don't have children. <laughs> <laughs> Same, but it's definitely a love thing. It's a love yeah. thing. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, and you can't help that. 
Um, okay, so I have a few uh, questions that I'm asking everyone in this series to sort of wrap up this interview because I'm very aware of your time too. Um, so which album or artist have you recommended to your friends and family the most? You know, I think <laughs> I would have to say Michael Jackson off the wall because a lot of people are like, yeah, we've heard Michael Jackson and they have only heard Billie Jean, Black or White, Beat It and Smooth Criminal. And I'm like, have you heard a song Girlfriend by Michael Jackson? No. Right. So go listen to Michael Jackson off the wall. And it's like from 1979 and it sounds, it could be from today. It sounds amazing. So I think that would have to be the album that I have recommended the most. Okay. I'm, I will confess, like I've always, you know, I've, loved his music and I, I I appreciate what he did as an artist um but I haven't probably delved in enough at all so I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to that record immediately after this conversation um okay so if you could have a drink this I mean you might have already answered this in a way if you could have a drink with any musician dead or alive who would it be and what would you ask them okay uh you know what uh, I think a lot of people are expecting me to say this, but it would have to be John Mayer. And I'm saying that because I wouldn't want to talk to him about guitar playing or or singing. I would want to talk to him about like life, like because he's a talker. You know, he's a great talker, and he you know he thinks a lot and he's super smart. And I'm not I'm not a talker. And at interviews, I, I talk because that's what I'm supposed to do. But when I'm with my friends and with people, I'm the quiet one. Uh, so I couldn't have like a drink with Prince or Michael Jackson because I feel they would be like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, okay. I feel they were more like, you know, more like that. And then we would just be quiet. But with John Mayer, he can just talk and talk. And I would be like, everything you say is great. You know? Uh, so. The, the only thing that I think I would struggle with is obviously having a history with his music and like adoring his music so much you know everyone knows I I absolutely adore him and and the the way you know in England I don't feel like he wasn't as popular as he was in the US like you might have experienced this too like he wasn't super popular in 2008 over here so when I discovered him around that time uh where the light is really that was like the the record that really just like got me into him um I was sort of explaining it to people and then now my career because of like I, I I've met him very very briefly and actually his talking well my question and then his talking kind of got me into trouble really not into trouble at all but just like I just I feel like I got off on the wrong foot with him and now I don't feel like I can recover from it so I really I I would love to do a long form interview with him where I'm I'm chill and calm but I just I would just wonder whether or not I'd actually be able to do that because his when you say he's smart like he definitely is smart and he's obviously um he's obviously extremely intelligent and well read but there are some things he says that I'm like, I, I don't quite understand what you're saying. Like he'll, he's very clever at like talking around something. Um, and I think he sort of goes off on one and then he's also, you know, he wants to be a comedian too. And I'm like, I'm like, I just don't think I'm sharp enough to be able to get everything you're saying so would it just be an absolute nightmare for me to have a I think maybe having a drink with with him would be way cooler and I, I from what I've heard about him from friends that have spoken to him he, he does seem like he does seem a bit chiller than maybe he comes across when he's doing his monologues on stage or you know in interviews and stuff but but yeah man I, I imagine like I imagine he's seen your Instagram videos I, I, he must have. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I can't really think about that because that's the, that's no. <laughs> okay. Honestly, it's, it's terrifying to think about, like, I've had a few, uh, calls recently with, with another artist who I won't share because I don't want to be like, I don't want to be that girl, but I'm just like, how, 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 how is this happening right now? Why is this happening? Why am I having a conversation with you? 
how have you seen what I've what I've done? Because some of what I've done is terrible. Like I don't want, I don't I don't want to be judged on on that. Like I promise I can kind of play guitar sometimes and kind of sing songs. I promise. I promise. But I hate that that's what you've seen. Um and it's usually like the like me trying to be funny videos that garner attention from like the crowd that I just want to be cool in front of and it just yeah it's it's always it's always it's always that way and actually it, it's kind of like I need to learn my own lesson where it's like don't put anything out there that you will be embarrassed about later so stay calm stay cool um and you and you never know what what will go viral either it might be the video you really don't like but the world likes it and all of a sudden that's your thing yeah yeah that's that's definitely um that's definitely happened to me sadly um okay so third question uh tell me about your favorite piece of music gear or piece of jack uh, uh I'll, I'll, I'll say that again tell me about your favorite piece of music gear or piece of tech that it doesn't have to be music related but obviously it can be um and the story behind it as a, you said the cool word you said did you say gearhead is that a thing uh yeah I, I have said that yeah yeah so i'm not a gearhead words uh so which means i really don't like uh, guitars and pedals yeah i love that but no i love my headphones um like you won't never see me without my my headphones uh, noise cancelling headphones because i really I'm, i'm scared of people so i'm always hiding behind the 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 headphones and now i got the the boss uh, wasa something headphones was it was it Air? right yeah those are great Aren't they, incredible? they are so good and i've been looking for something like that for such a long time because i travel a lot and you know having the head uh, having the headphones with a great guitar sound in your hotel room just wow, shred your like really and it sounds great it sounds so good and it's so hard to communicate how good it sounds and actually like for me the the novelty aspect of like having the amp behind you and all that stuff i don't need i don't need that i i i I honestly i think if there was a way of them making them more affordable and just having having like the steady tone in in the ears that would be complete game changer for everyone right now because of the tech because of the tech behind it they are a bit expensive um and you know it's quite right that they have a price tag when they've put so much research into capturing that sound but it's made me it's made me play electric more because i'm just i'm aware that i'm not gonna annoy my neighbors and absolutely you know feeling like you're actually playing rather than just like having to be quiet in your in your home yeah that's a that's a great great choice i respect that (laughs) Okay, so final question uh, to end off this interview. Um, If you could give your younger self a word of musical advice, what would it be? Start practicing now. (laughs) Just, just Just start now. Don't wait until you're 20, but but take it serious now. I I took the whole uh, performing thing serious and the business thing and the booking and I took that part of it seriously, but not the the guitar. I didn't take it seriously and I regret that. So if I could, I would go back and say, stop what you're doing, put on your guitar and actually spend four hours with it every day. Um, and also I think I would say, it's all, it's, it's going to be okay. Just breathe. It's, it's okay to take a break. It's okay to actually sleep. Uh, just, you know, breathe, I think. That's a great way to end this interview. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. This was so fun. I just know that Tora is going to go a long way. So be sure to follow her journey on social media and listen to her music. It was so much fun chatting to her. And I really hope we can collaborate in future. Now for information on the sponsor of this entire series. More than 250,000 artists rely on DistroKid to distribute their music, including myself. If you're wanting to have your music available on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music and Tidal, amongst many more stores, then you should sign up using the link in the description. An account starts at just $19.99 for unlimited songs and albums in 12 months. And with the link in the description, you'll get 7% off your first year. 
If you are writing and producing music right now, then I can't recommend DistroKid enough. So a massive thanks to them for making this entire series possible. And be sure to check out that link in the description for that 7% discount. But otherwise, I'll see you very soon.